guys, my name is Casey, and as my unusually frequent uploads as of late may have indicated, I am studying abroad in London. And to say that I've experienced a bit of culture shock is a bit of an understatement. I would not describe my first two weeks as anything less than eventful. For example, arriving to our hotel after a long overnight flight only to find that the hotel was in fact a brothel. That doesn't happen in America. Or at least it's never happened to me in my little corner of the country. <laughs> but anyways, we persevered and found an actual hotel that was decidedly less sketch. Which brings us to the actual topic of this video, aka what at the time seemed like an actual near-death experience. Basically, I'd gotten quite a bit drunk the day before. Combined with an eight hour time difference and not sleeping at all on the flight over meant that I conked out at about six o'clock, woke up at 3 a.m. to take a shower and then went back to sleep, hoping to sleep for as long as humanly possible. Thus, when my dad left at 10.30 the next morning to go on a jog, I was perfectly content to continue sleeping. Until about 11 a.m. when I was woken up by a ridiculously loud, shrill alarm. At first I was incredibly confused, like what the frick kind of alarm clock is this? Then I realized that this was actually not in fact an alarm clock and rather an alarm which sounds when something quite drastic has gone wrong. So of course I bolt out of bed fumbling around for my glasses and phone which you know I can't really find because the curtains have been closed the night before. Just as I'm about to exit the room I realize wait a second I'm still wearing pajama shorts. So after fumbling in my suitcase and grabbing the first pair of pants that I can find and throwing them on over the shorts, I run out the door, only to be confronted by a series of doors that definitely had not been there the day before. So these doors don't have any sort of visible lock or handle to open them with. So I'm very confused and immediately in my sleep deprived state, I think, Oh my goodness, this is just like Titanic, you know, when they lock all the non-first class passengers down in their halls so that the actual first class passengers can escape. I'm literally Jack right now. I'm Jack from Titanic. <laughs> like, is this my fate? Is this how I'm gonna die? But then I obviously realized that this is literally the dumbest thing that would ever happen. And I just kind of tried gently pushing on the door, which, you know, to no one's surprise, opens. <laughs> so after pushing my way through two more sets of doors, I come upon the elevator. One of the first rules in a fire is that when there's a fire, you take the stairs, not the elevator, but I was not about to go back through those doors looking for a set of stairs, which may or may not exist. So I took the elevator down. After a harrowing elevator ride, I finally arrived in the lobby and I burst out through those doors, expecting to see like hordes of confused, frightened people just milling about. This is not the case. The lobby was completely empty, except for this nice little family having breakfast and some bellmen pushing luggage towards the elevators to take him up. Still feeling incredibly shook, I run towards the bellman and ask, Where's the fire? The what? The fire, you know, the alarm that's going off? Oh, yeah, that's just a test. A what? We do a test every Tuesday at 11 just to make sure that the alarm still works. At this point, I'm practically having an aneurysm as all my stress bubbles over, and I realize how absolutely crazy I must look. I would not talk to me if I saw me in public. But, you know, instead of trying to press this issue further, I just eat my pride and go back upstairs hoping to catch a little more sleep. I hope you enjoyed this unfortunate experience. Someone's um, emailing me, so I just gotta notification from that, thank you. If you want to hear more about my unfortunate experiences or keep up with me as I mill about London and probably get lost, then you should subscribe. <laughs> but thank you so much for watching and I will see you next week. Bye!